In the CO2 Exide project, scientists and industry partners all over Europe are researching a new way to make an important chemical, ethylene oxide, using CO2 instead of fossil fuels and renewable energy to create a carbon neutral product for a carbon neutral future. Okay, so what is ethylene oxide? Ethylene oxide is a highly explosive and highly toxic gas, which is at the same time an extremely valuable chemical for various types of industry. It's produced in millions of tons per year. It's used for, um, for many different purposes in the chemical industry. But at the same time, it's very dangerous because it's extremely reactive. And this high chemical reactivity makes it also so valuable because it can be tra easily transformed to many other very valuable products. Plastics. So this is one very special application. So when we think of the PET bottle where we drink out our mineral water, we are talking about a market volume of, let's say, approximately 150 million tons per year. We're looking at a really useful material, ethylene oxide, and we're looking for a more environmentally friendly way of making that. So that's using carbon dioxide as our carbon source instead of relying on fossil fuel. Just to uh, switch from a non-renewable source to a renewable source. While we do this, we also like help in reducing the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. You could displace part of the need for oil and become more sustainable. Yeah. So this means we will produce chemicals out of CO2 and electricity. So how does the process work? We enter renewable CO2 and water, and with the use of electricity from renewable sources, we make two reactions happen simultaneously in the same reactor. CO2 becomes ethylene and water becomes hydrogen peroxide. In the next step, we combine these two products into ethylene oxide. And this is, this is a difficult task. It is a difficult task because there are, um, there are many reactions that can take place and that take place. And usually when you're targeting a single pro product, you don't want many other products being formed. The board project is divided in two. We have one part which is looking at converting carbon dioxide into ethylene, another part that converts water into hydrogen peroxide. And then later on we'll take those two different species, wrap those together. And then we will combine these two products in an ethylene oxide reactor to ethylene oxide and polyethylene glycol. So we can use flow of electrons in two processes running in parallel. And we can then use products of both processes into the secondary reaction producing ethylene oxide, which is an ver a very important chemical in the industry. There's a lot of scientific thought which goes in. It's not just sticking two things in, in, a, in a beaker and then producing the solution to world problems. It, it actually needs to be a sequence assembled in a correct way, and that's why we are really benefiting for, from all of the partners. In the CO2 Exide project, 10 different partners from all over Europe combine their expertise. Both universities and industry partners collaborate closely, combining fundamental research with industrial application. You have individual partners and these partners focus on certain tasks. The most thing about this collaboration is that we have a very rapid information exchange. We have lots of very regular uh, meetings um, you know, online through video conferencing. Yes, uh, we are having our Skype discussions every second week. We can guide each other's work um, and I think it is overall a much faster way uh, to get to that end goal. The partners at universities, they are mostly involved in catalyst development. 
catalyst for the cathode, catalyst for the anode, for developing the cell, uh, for sourcing or purifying the CO2, for the epoxidation and so on. And all these kind of process steps, they need to be kind of brought together. So there are different things you have to think about when you consider the same reaction on a different scale. Because a lot of the negative effects we see tend to scale up with size. So it's, it's really useful to have those industrial partners for that knowledge and that experience. In the first step, you have to build something which is laboratory scale to get more knowledge about the process in real environment. And then you can scale up um, to a pilot plant and to an industrial product. And so it's really important to know how these two different areas work together to be able to get something that you know, doesn't just work, but works in a, in a cost-effective and a, a feasibly upscalable way. And that's why we have such a strong industry contribution in this project. Siemens is focusing on this electrocatalytic reactor unit. This means the complete system and the process development of the electrocatalyst unit. The parts of this unit are manufactured by Scheffler, so the electrolyzer cell is manufactured by Scheffler. We have the universities working on the catalyst development, the University of Southampton and AGH at Krakow. BME Budapest is doing the long-term experiments with the catalysts and the University at Riga working on the membrane to separate the anodic and cathodic part. We build up a demonstrator system based on three main units. We start here with the CO2. From a biogas plant that is located in Austria, where we really extract the real-world gas there via the technology of Axiom. So what we see here is the membrane. If you look closely to it, we have very small fibers and they are hollow, so the gas is running through it. And by the different reaction, we separate the components. Biogas plants, because they are spread already all over Europe. The carbon in there is uh, not fossil based, it's renewable. Yeah, this project helps to clean up our air and, and to basically make, uh, not waste a resource because CO2 should be thought about as a resource. And the idea is to use this CO2 as the final waste of our economy, as a feedstock to produce something new. That means we'll have carbon dioxide source coming from natural source from uh, some waste processing plant. We'll have an electrolyzer developed by Siemens will have catalytic electrode in the electrolyzer developed by many partners and fabricated most probably by Scheffler. Then we'll have ethylene enrichment unit developed by Axiom and epoxidation reactor developed at Fraunhofer. We'll have many components from different laboratories and our task will be to couple all these components together to make them compatible and to make them running as one experimental setup. Well, it's, it's easy to say, but it's actually a very complicated task. It's complicated enough to get all the individual process steps running and, and achieve all the targets that you have. But then if you bring these process steps together and integrate them, then the many other problems occur that you haven't thought about before. We want to show in a demonstrator that we think about these, these complex issues um, and make a first step to really integrate the entire process chain. And that's why we do this. So now we are in the final step, in the final year. This is the moment where we put together all the parts developed at the partner sites and we will set up this demonstrator system at Krakow together with all the partners. Well, it will look like uh, several uh, big cupboards of the size of big refrigerator. It will be a large, industrial-like looking device. 
and CO2 excite is just the first step in the right direction. There's sometimes overproduction of uh, green electricity and there's always overproduction of CO2. The huge potential benefit of this technology that this basically could be implemented close to carbon neutral. If technologies like we develop here in CO2 Excite is implemented in, in industry, it must help to mitigate climate change. We get a big step forward um, to more um, sustainability. And I think it's just, it is good and useful because, I mean, it's, it's a very small part of the puzzle, very small part, of course. Um, but it's, I think it's, um, yeah, I, I can, at, at the end of the day, I can say, yeah, I, I'm, working, uh, I'm working on something that, uh, that can help to, yeah, to, 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 to make the world a little better. Oh yes, it makes a lot of fun. Science would always motivate you to be curious. <laughs> yes, normally. <laughs> Research-oriented work is fun. It's, fr it's frustrating but rewarding, I think is, is the, uh, the truth that I think most scientists would say. Mm -hmm.